Hey guys, I'm Isaac Anderson. Today I'm sitting with Mr. Bobby Calloway. He is an actor and director of the upcoming play Trojan Women at the Bear Theater. Bobby, how you doing? How you doing today, Isaac? I'm doing good, man. Uh, so today, since you are a theater uh, expert, I, would you call yourself an expert? Uh, let's just say I uh, talk a very, or let's quote Robert Downey Jr. since it's also film. I'm an incredibly gifted faker. Uh, so today I thought it was really appropriate uh, to not only talk about uh, theater stuff, but since we're a movie show, I thought we might talk uh, a lot about how theater has tied into film, how it's influenced film, and uh, kind of just about uh, some of our personal favorite things about both of those mediums and how they kind of differ. But uh, first off, uh, Bobby, um, so theater and film, I've always kind of had a, a, a pretty strong connection. Would you not agree? Or Yeah, I mean, well, the earliest films, if we go back and look at them, they are very clearly well, this is something we did on stage. Let's put a camera in front of it and try and capture it for posterity's sake. And uh, there's a lot of theory in theater that um, modernism or naturalism in the theater came about because of the invention of photography. And they had to say, well, now we have to make stage shows look like real life all the time. It's a good feedback loop, sort of the way like Kurosawa was influenced by early westerns and then influenced spaghetti westerns back and forth like that. I mean, being in uh, the theater world for so long uh, and kind of being in all the different facets of it, being actor, producer, director, what do you think some of the biggest challenges are uh, that people run into when they try to adapt theater into film or vice versa? The biggest thing is the, the difference in the storytelling. So film is a very visual medium. You can say a monologue or a soliloquy with a shot. So dialogue is a big factor. So you can tell when something is originally for stage per se instead of film when characters are very verbose, they speak a lot, they might say things that are a little too clever for normal human speech and then when you translate that to film it sometimes comes across as well this is just too wordy. You know there's the problem of space. Often if you're doing a stage show you can have something that takes place in just one room. But then if you take that onto film, everyone's like, this is too claustrophobic. Why does this not leave or do anything? So you have to come up with circumstances or reasoning why it takes place in such a space. And then for me, the biggest thing is uh, the specificity. Like on stage, you can be more evocative and suggestive. But on film, if you're that, it's just called, it's dreamy, or it's got this more surreal logic to it. But uh, theater has also tried to go big scale um and I, I'm doing research on this. I was trying to find some bigger scale things like movies that were turned into theater plays, like Shrek, that's yeah. just like creepy. <laughs> and then uh, Spider-Man, which like some guy died or got paralyzed or something. Insert clip now. So, I mean, people have tried, so they do these spectacular things that people have tried to done in film, but like just failed miserably in the theater. And so, same thing, vice versa, but like, um, I think there's some really awesome uh, screenwriters that are very gifted in both mediums and can really um, translate it well. And um, uh, but just in your mind, no matter what the scale is, uh, what uh, movies or like what theater plays do you think really show kind of an improper adaptation and kind of a misunderstanding of that kind of thing in your eye? So you were talking about uh, people who do both worlds, really good writers, and one example I think of is uh, Harold Pinter who was very big in like the 60s in the UK and later had some American success. But he also was a very prolific screenwriter. I remember, because I really liked his stage plays, I saw a film version of his uh, play, The Birthday Party, which is a very weird, it's called a comedy of menace because you're not really sure what's going on. Most of the time in characters just enigmatically enter and then just hang out a little too long. It's bizarre. And the problem with that was it's that one room principle. Most of the play, you are just in this guy Stanley's flat, and that's where it's, the action takes place. But in this, they try and throw in a few very clearly cropped second unit like exterior shots and say, look, there's a world outside. But they never do anything with that. Another one I think of very recently is that uh, more recent film version of The Producers that was based on the musical version that Mel Brooks had made of his own film from yeah. the 60s. And if I'm correct, I believe the director of that was the choreographer for the Broadway show. So in terms of how the dances are handled, they're very dynamic and you can tell what the dancers are doing. The problem is it never feels like a film. It feels like we got really, really close to a bunch of stage actors. Do you have any ones that you think actually does it pretty well? Like which ones stand out in your mind? 
One of my favorite movies actually is uh, West Side Story. And uh, it's actually interesting because I saw the uh, Broadway revival a couple years ago where they rewrote some of the dialogue to be in Spanish so that the Puerto Ricans could be more accurately represented. But I was thinking about West Side Story uh, for good versions of this. I, I think my next question is, uh, is there any specific like uh, people or like screenwriters or directors do you think are really good at translating this kind of material? Uh, because I, I have one too. I was just curious to see if you had one just... Um, so uh, first that comes to my mind is uh, one of my favorite current guys in the medium, Martin McDonough, who is a uh, Tony nominated playwright, but he also has Os he's an Oscar winning director. He's done like In Bruges and Seven Psychopaths and most recently Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. And he's very well known for his dark comedy and his very playful use of dialogue as most Irish writers are. I like him because he seems to know what's gonna work best on each medium, so he knows how to translate it. Like, if you watch Red Be Hand Against Spokane, it only works on stage. But if you watch Three Billboards, it is definitely a film. It doesn't really fit in the stage conventions, but who are you thinking of? I'm I was thinking of uh, Aaron Sorkin, actually. Oh, yeah. Nice. Aaron Sorkin, I think, is like the king. Of, first off, he's the king of dialogue, period. Yeah. Um, but second off, he is so good at, like, making compelling characters, uh, not necessarily through, you know, intricate plot lines or all this, even though that stuff is very prevalent in his writing, it's all about the dialogue with him. He oh, loves yeah. dialogue, and he actually stays on set, like, um, when people are working with the dialogue. And uh, I think the best example to me is probably A Few Good Men. Oh, yeah. Um, that was a stage play, and he, the way he helped it become a, a movie, uh, I believe Rob Reiner directed that, correct? If I um, remember, yeah. And I mean, it translates so well into that, and I don't think any sort of the integrity of the story is lost. I think pretty much all the inflection and everything is stuff that he had in his head. Well, Bobby, thank you so much for being here and talking a lot about this. Uh, uh, tell me a little bit about Trojan Women. This is a play that you uh, are involved with. Uh, can you please tell everybody at home uh, what that's all about? So yeah, uh, Trojan Women is a, uh, it's an ancient Greek play. It was written in 415 BC. The story of it, uh, a bunch of women in the aftermath of Troy, after the city's been sacked and burned, dealing with what happens now, what do we do with our lives. And uh, the beauty of this story is that it doesn't really it's not an ancient story. It's not an ancient, uh, this is a remove from our issues. It's a recurrent problem, war and crises and the abuse and subjugation of people throughout time. So it's almost trying to draw like modern parallels, like something that the audience can really kind of gravitate towards and relate to in a modern context, but still doing it in a very classical Greek way. Oh yeah, and you know, trying to keep it out of that stiff, stagey kind of thing where it's like, this is an ancient play and it follows the conventions and the rules of therein, but we're doing some different things staging-wise that will make it feel much more vibrant and new, because, you know, nowadays, if you can't capture someone's attention in a YouTube video, how can you? If people want to uh, find out more information about the Trojan Women, where would they go? So, uh, this is through Bear Theater, as you said at the top of the show, and that's B-A-R-E, Bear as in Naked Bear Theater. Uh, you go to their website, and right now, all of the relevant information for the show is right up there. Awesome. Well, Bobby, thank you so much. I'm very excited to see it myself. Thank and you. And if any of you guys are interested, you heard the man. You know exactly what to do. Thank you so much for watching. Tyler Keene, who cares if you don't like theater?